background. That's hot. All right, Katomi. I guess we'll just go into this because it's already recording. Yeah, we'll sure. go into it right there. Yeah. Um, thank you for joining. My name is uh, Robinson Mega, and if you're watching this, you may have stumbled across it on accident, thinking that you were going to watch a music review um, on Secret House Against the World. But this channel, which I run um, for the most part, also has other content. I put my Mega Late Show shit on there, which is where we met my podcast, uh, Five Years Strong, Tokyo-based hip-hop art and culture. Um, this is, I think I'm going to call these, uh, I'm not sure what, I, I want these to be reoccurring kind of geek combos that we do, and I'm not sure if maybe we should rebrand and come up with a name for it. Maybe we'll think about it. We can think it In over. the meantime, I'll just put this under Odd Cypher Divine, which is a part of the channel where I have conversations about almost anything. And today we are going to be reviewing, uh, maybe maybe reviewing is the wrong term, discussing, having a conversation about the Batman. The Batman. The Batman. Batman. You can see who uh, produced the beat, uh, like the background music um, right here. Uh, but before we get into it, I'd like to at least explain how we met and maybe give a little bit of your background just so people have a frame of reference. We met on our podcast when you used to produce um, a YouTube show called Sunday Replay. Yep, that's right. Where you would get local DJs here in Tokyo and you guys would interview them. You would play retro games together yep. and then you would they would create a musical mix for you, yep. which is really dope. And and the you you and the two other homies used to do that, but also you're um, an animator, an illustrator. Could you tell us? Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I used to uh, produce a project like uh, make a just reference uh, called Sunday Replay, where just three guys. Uh, myself included would uh hang out with local djs local artists in the neighborhood in tokyo and we just play video games and uh they would share their gifts and we would make stupid jokes all those videos are still online yeah yeah they're all still available online so you can yeah, go check, check it, it out. out they're really fun yeah. we, you never released our episode where we fucking whooped you guys in dragon ball but that was all good it's still a work in progress and you never know it might come out it would be dope because you you animated us as dragon ball characters i did I the did. three the three original members of the mega late show mega late and steez um mls we were you you did a phenomenal job we look like dragon ball characters I, 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 I was a brown dragon ball character with a beanie on i was i've, I've never looked better i don't think it was the most uh ambitious animation project that i ever uh, embarked upon on my own so and maybe that's why it never came out because it was like you might have got you in over your head a little a bit a little overwhelming at that's the end thought. of the day <laughs> I, when i when when i when he showed us like some of like uh like short animation cells of it in, in like pictures i was like wow this is this is way more than what i edit with i just turn on the camera and then record and <laughs> sync the audio but yeah man uh, you're also um a, a geek, I, I suppose you could say. You're you're um, around the same age as me. Yep. Lifelong comic book fan, lifelong anime fan, and since you're an animator, you're you're very knowledgeable about those things. And you've also studied film, and you know general like uh, film theory and such. Yeah, I'm okay. a bit of a bit of a nerd in, in or geek is probably the better term uh, in in some aspects of visual media. So um, uh, film theory was something that I was very fascinated by when I was in art school. I studied illustration and animation in in school but i also had a lot of friends who were in film Bet. so i got to sit down and talk with people who are actually sitting down and understanding the, you know the logistics of film theory and the structure of how a film is made so i got a little bit of experience out of that and then from there um i started making my own stuff and then okay. uh from there i just kind of was focusing on you know the way that films are being made today and how much they enrage me. <laughs> word, word. Yeah, I won't bore you guys with um, all of my credentials, qualifications, and the things that I've studied. But to you have so many. In. Yeah, well, I mean, like, uh, un unimportant to this conversation, but just know that I've, I've seen a Batman movie or two in my time. Imagine, yeah. Yeah, so let's let's go ahead and jump right into it. Let's go start. Let's start talking. We've been talking about comic books all night and comic book movies all night. Let's talk about the Batman. All right. Um, right. I'm not, This we're just still kind of workshopping exactly how we're going to talk about these things. Uh, we thought that maybe one of the ways that we could do it is to um, discuss an aspect of the film such as like the the actors and cast filmography uh, excuse me cinematography action and then give it like kind of like you know talk about a little bit but then give it like a good bad or ugly ranking maybe so let's let's um do, should we do like an overall did you overall like the film were you a fan of it you want to start with it should we? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's get that out the way and then we can kind of build on our thoughts about it. Sure. How about you go first? Okay. Um, overall. Man, I I liked it. 
I, I enjoyed the depiction of Batman. I enjoyed it for the most part. I thought it was a pretty good story for Batman, and and it worked uh, pretty well as a film. I thought that it was too long. I thought the acts, the the. I thought it. It seemed to me like it was like a bingeable series that was turned into a film, mm-hmm. and it kind of seemed to me like they wrote a four or five issue miniseries and then use the comic book to storyboard the film it kind of feels to me like a lot of aspects of the movie maybe um the studio got there and said we need to cut out some of this we need to cut out some of this bat narration we need to add an action sequence and some of those things just didn't work very well together for me but overall there's a lot of things that i like about the batman um the cast was you know the the cast the um kind of depiction of gotham and a lot of a lot of the things worked pretty pretty fine for me um more as like a netflix series though i see this was this was like um it was kind of like watching like the Daredevil's TV series, but like, like the whole way through. Yeah, but in, in like one night, and it was it was very long to me. I think the biggest issue that I had is, um, it it it's kind of an anti Batman story to me. It's a story to me that doesn't like Batman very much. But we'll get into it. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, that's my critique. Right on. And it's not a Lacanian <laughs> critique, Diami. <laughs> my, 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 you know, is I'm into, I'm into, I've been reading about, you know, uh, I, I like Lacan for, you know, ideological Marxist analysis and such, yeah. but um, I've been reading some books about Lacan in 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 film and cinematog in in cinema, hmm. and so, but it's not a Lacanian critique there. It's just, it, it, to me, the thematic through line of it ends at, in a different place than this movie ends, um, from my assessment. I say. What, what, what do you got? You do enjoy it. Um, You've seen it four times, right? Yes, I have. I've seen it one and a, th- and a like a half times. <laughs> and and the second time was a bootleg of it, which doesn't do it justice because it's a fucking cam and this movie is beautiful. Yes. Um, I will say this. Um, as far as a comic book or a Batman uh, geek is concerned, this is the best bat- adaptation ever put to screen, in my personal opinion. You mean like comic book to to yes. movie fidelity? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, you think it's the best Batman movie? Batman adaptation, for okay. sure. Okay. Um, best Batman movie, that's debatable, but I will definitely say... I think The Dark Knight is just so much better. We'll as get a, into as that. a movie. We will definitely discuss that today. <laughs> yeah. But as far as adaptations are concerned, I think this is definitely a, the, one of the best one-to-one. If you really wanted to see Batman at his best in terms of a detective in terms of a crime fighter in terms of a vigilante this is the kind of film that you've been wanting to see it does pull those things together pretty pretty interesting i think they did a fantastic job with that i will give you this on the whole it's three hours long did we need a three hour long batman movie probably not i mean i guess we did people liked it I really appreciate that it gave its story time to breathe. I feel like a lot of films like this, especially when it comes to things like crime dramas, a lot more time needs to be taken into consideration. Um, It is very neo-noir kind of. Yes, definitely. Matt Reeves is not afraid of that, though. That's one of the things that is really... He's really a great person to to create this film because he's fine with it being, like, quiet for three minutes. Yes, and I feel like that's so important, especially when it comes to a Batman story, because his entire... His whole shtick is fear and and the shadows. You need time to make those shadows seem terrifying. I've I've only seen, like... Three of his movies, or four of his movies, maybe. What else did he done? He did all of the, he did all of the, um, the the apes series. No, right? he didn't do the first one. He oh, did he the did two and three. Third. Yeah. Oh, I mean, they're phenom- All of them are phenomenal. But yes. he's really good in that. What else did he do? He did Let Me In, which was oh, I didn't watch that an adaptation to the Let the Right One In. Yeah. I, I saw Let the Right One In, and I was like, I'm not going to watch that. Superior uh, film. <laughs> yeah. I, I I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't watch. You know, uh, Spike Lee's old boy either. Right. You know exactly. what I mean? Like, yeah. why, why would I? <laughs> What's the, the, point? the first one was perfect. I mean, it's, the closest it gets to that for me is like The Departed. And yeah. And that's like barely. Yeah, okay. But okay, yeah. Infernal so, Affairs is debatably not the better movie. Right. Like, the Departed is significantly better right. in terms of theming and structure. But Are you a cop? Yeah. Are you a cop? <laughs> yeah. Tell me now if you're a cop. <laughs> yeah, I fucking like it. Uh, but but yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah. But, but yeah, he, fi- he's good at that. Yeah. As a film, in terms of structure, in terms of pacing, I think this was excellent. But it is, agreed, a little long. It's a little long in the tooth. You need to sit down, take a day off, and really appreciate it for for its spectacle. Um, the theming is a bit, a bit obvious. It's not subtle. <laughs> 
But um, the characters were well casted. I think the acting is superb. I think the cinematography is stupendous. And I guess we'll talk a little bit more about that in detail later on. But I think overall, in terms of presentation, excellent. Let's get let's get right into the categories. Let's talk about the cinematography right now. Okay, let's do it. Uh, that, that, I mean, obviously, you know, um, so, some of some of the things that really stood out to me are were not the the intentional iconic shots mm. but there is just like the gotham that he kind of created mm. in 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 the uh, it doesn't look like a, a city that you've ever seen whereas like uh, all i mean i guess you could say the burton and especially the schumacher movies didn't feel right. like a city you've ever seen <laughs> but this gotham has a very different feel but it also has a very grounded real feel that like if you oh i never been to detroit so i don't know what it looks like right it it, it very it seems very real he does uh, he does a great job creating this dark atmosphere of danger at night those mm. slow shots in the beginning where it's just like the guys doing crime and just looking into the darkness to see if you know like if something's there he yeah. creates like th these really great moments and i and, you know part of that is part of that is also like the the um the director of cinematography just like just like the nolan films like um what's his name wally fister yeah you know he has his tricks, his bag to do things. Yeah. But the the work in this movie is beautiful. Craig like, Frazier dope. is an excellent cinematographer. I think he's a bit too on the nose with a lot of uh, his. He he did uh, he did work. Rogue One as well. Yeah. He, I think he did. And what else did he do? He, he did the Apes movies too. Okay, right, right. He but also um, Vice. But Rogue Rogue One Rogue was one. Uh, of all the new Star Wars films, that's mm. probably my favorite one. Mm. I've only seen it once, but I mean, it's like he's good. He's very good. He's very very good at establishing yeah. shots. I think yeah. a lot of uh, the best shots that are in the Batman are a lot of them where it's not the characters doing shot reverse shot. It's a lot of out of focus, a lot of distant shots that are sprawling cityscapes that have the two characters in a high contrast. Uh, position heavy saturation of oranges and reds yeah. and these are beautiful structures beautiful scenes that are shot and they fit fantastically well in the film yeah. craig frazier does a lot of that but he also does a lot of the a lot of the cheesecake when it comes to cinematography it's very on the nose when he does certain yeah. shots because it fits the the theme of the shot or the scene and it just feels very forced sometimes yeah at least the um the 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 car chase scene. Mm. Oh, also, this is spoilers galore. By the oh, way, oh god, yeah. So I'll put, put I'll put, the, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll put it. I'll put it in the beginning. Put like a blaring, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, red light. This is I, I mean, on. yeah, <laughs> fucking obviously. But um, you know, when there, where there's fire and it's like upside down camera, and he's like walking. It, like it looks kind of really cool, but it's also like, eh. But it does look really cool. The 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 um the symbolism of him being like an act like a re falling rebirth and an actual torchbearer yeah. for the people of Gotham and then it's really heavy handed but it's yeah. also a comic book movie right there's a lot of comic book shots in this mixed with this like neo noir kind of sensibility I that, that work agree okay with that um i also think that there was a lot of uh, issues with contrast, um, or rather a, a, he a heavy saturation of of high contrast. Um, it's a dark movie, like admittedly, oh. it, it's it, it it leans a little bit hard on the dark side, which works for it because well, it's a Batman movie, so it's supposed to be dark. But there are some instances where I actually could have you, you you overlook certain things. For example, the ending where the fourth act essentially the, no, let's call it the fourteenth act because it's like fourteen acts of this thing. How many acts? Of, <laughs> like seriously, how many acts? Of, when I thought there there's like four different parts where I thought it was like ending. I think that they're at least bare minimum. There's like six or seven acts in this, right? Like, let's let's go let's go with that. It's number. not even five. It's like <laughs> six. But they, it's also like the the first could be like an epilogue mm. with the bat narration. You right, know what right. I mean? Like that's a very comic booky. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, a, not an epilogue, a prologue. Oh yeah. Um, but but yeah, it's it's a lot. It's and, a it's a lot. But I feel like in that cinematography, there's a lot of things that get lost because of the heavy contrast, uh, because of that saturation of that heavy dark which okay. means you overlook certain things mm. uh, especially if they're in shot and then at the end when you see oh this is you this has been here the whole time I, I didn't notice that mm. because it's too damn dark <laughs> right you know I I, I I pride myself in my little analytical bullshit instrument to be able to like assess certain things about films on a first viewing but I do like to watch movies over and over again mm. to focus on things like the musical score and yeah. to focus on things like acting nuances and and um um, 
the the cinematography for one is one thing I look to and I wasn't able to pick up a lot of those things on whoever's handheld camera was happening in the bootleg that I watched yesterday <laughs> the first viewing was not enough so I, I, I don't know but let, let's give it a ranking good bad or ugly for the cinematography I'm gonna give it a good I'm gonna give it a good that's a good definitely well, let's move on to the casting what did you think about uh uh what, what are they calling him Baddison Robert Batten, Robert Batten, Bat- Batten, 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 I thought I thought uh, you know he's a phenomenal actor um, in the lighthouse. He, he was fucking great. He's great. He's much deeper and better than what we thought we were going to get when we saw it, when we all lined up for the first day of Twilight's release, right? <laughs> Which I've never seen. Thank <laughs> thank you, praise Allah. Um, uh, but but yeah, I thought he was great. Uh, the one scene where he's pushing the table, I was like, man, you should have worked out for that. Yeah. Should have put a little steroids on for that. Little <laughs> Not that I need all my Batman to look like fucking like super steroid gorillas, but I was like, ah, oh, come on, man. Right, right. It's right, all right. right, but he looks good as a skinny, a young, a young Batman. It's yeah? his second year. Yeah. yeah. How old is he in this though? I think he's supposed to be in his early thirties. He's thirty in this film, according oh, to man. the. I think according to That's, the lore. Well, because the. 20 years ago is mm-hmm. when his dad was murdered. So right. how old was he murdered in the comics? Like 10, right? He was 10, yeah. So he's fucking 30? Why are you so fucking edgy and weird at 30 <laughs> like that? I, the way that they kind of depict him is like he's like an angsty, like, like young, how old was Kurt Cobain when Kurt Cobain? Like he's like a Kurt Cobainy. Right. Kurt Cobainy is not everything that I've ever, I've never used that term ever in my life. Kurt but, Cobainy. Yeah, but he's very Kurt Cobainy. And I don't think I'm just saying that because there's Nirvana in the soundtrack, but he's no. kind of like, I'm vengeance. Right, right, right. No, no. Everyone's talking about that. The whole emo vibe that uh, Robert gave yeah. off with his characterization of Bruce Wayne. Um, it, Matt Reeves did admit that he sat down and watched Gus Van Sant's uh, Kurt Cobain mockumentary. Not mockumentary. Like a pseudo documentary. Okay. The Last of Us. So that might have played a part in the way that Robert was playing I like Bruce. the eye shadow. That shit's a good touch for I've, Batman. Uh, well, we finally have like a logical understanding as to why his eyes are blackened when he's in the mask. Because yeah. half the time when you're doing the Burton movies, it's like why what did what happened yeah Yeah. (laughs) what happened there so i think it i think it works for his character i think mm. i think all the i think all of the act like there's we could go on and on about who was really great who's not good in this everybody is fucking good in this. every actor in this film gives the an a plus performance even uh uh, what's his face the penguin who's the guy that played the penguin colin farrell I if you didn't tell you, me that it, was no him, I wouldn't know. Yeah, and he's fucking hilarious. Yes, he's fucking hilarious. <laughs> so good. And this actually, he he has what, what is the uh, what does he call him? Bad shit crazy or something? What, oh, yeah, no, what does he say? Good what cop, is this, bad the, shit cop. B- good cop. Ah, that's <laughs> fucking brilliant. No, he's great in this, and and I could see why they would want to give him a, a spinoff. I don't know if I'll be interested in it, but he's very good in it. Yes, he's very good in it. Absolutely, Zoe Kravitz is very good. There are a couple shots where the like you can clearly tell it's got like that Blade Two in front of the spotlight action looking oh, wonkiness to it. Oh, that man. that that Neo versus all the um, Agent Smiths wonkiness to it. But right, it, right. it's it's not too bad. It happens twice where I was like, ugh. And there, it's like a yes. silhouette of it. Yes, yes, yes. And I do I do see what you're getting at. But she weighs like ten pounds, 110 pounds, if that. And so it's like, what do you expect? What do you expect? I think there's um there's a charm to Zoe Kravitz that we didn't get, uh, for example, like in Christopher Nolan's uh, Dark Knight Rises with uh, Anne, Anne Hathaway's, Hathaway's Catwoman. Oh, yeah. I think uh, Zoe Kravitz delivers something more hum- human, yeah. something more believable. Um, it's an overall better depiction of, of Catwoman. Of Selena Kyle, absolutely. Absolutely. Year one references galore, by the way. Yeah. Uh, both in her attire and her character, it's just mm, ah, delicious. Yeah, they're, they're, you know, speaking of which, there's like you know, there's like long Halloween aspects in there. There's yes. kind of hush aspects in there. Yep. The the mother being all wonky in the head is kind of like a what does that have to do with like a court of owls thing later happening? Mm-hmm. You know, so they do they they do pay attention to um. You know some of the source material, and yes, and, and that's interesting. Um, I do want to get really quick back to uh, Robert Pattinson's depiction, if if I may. Please. Um, I honestly think uh, it's so frustrating to have to talk about Robert Pattinson delivering a significantly good performance because he's mired in the history of his Twilight. Sure. You know backstory, like his the, the, the his whole. Um, you know, his whole acting career basically, you know, launched when he was the sparkly vampire. And yeah. it just seems like it's just such a crutch to, ex- 
you know, to to to, uh, to ex- engage with his character in this film. Was Beca- there was there much of like a public outlash, like outcry against him? Because oh yeah, absolutely, there was. I didn't. There I missed was. that. I didn't. Yeah. I'm not on any of these geek forums or anything anymore. I've been off for years now because I just don't give a shit about like. <laughs> It's like Heimdall's white. How can he be black? How can he be fucking black? Are you going to tell me white guys are in fucking Norway? Yeah, but you know? it's like this is what I mean. It, it, yeah. It's it's this cult, it, it's this cultural yeah. backlash that has everything to do with the most you know the loudest of uh, the the loud minority crying mm-hmm. out for some some semblance of you know I don't like change. I'm scared of change. Right. But Robert Pattinson, like you've said in the Lighthouse, proves time and time again that the man is a competent performer. Um, right. Cosmopolis is one of my favorite films. Granted, it's you know it's a Cronenberg one-off, and it's Robert Pattinson at his most looniest. But that's what makes it work because the man is talented. Yeah. Um, the Lighthouse again, I excellent had, film. I had no like qualms about it. I yeah. was like, yo, we get like, you know, skinny Batman. I mean, like, what what's the worst that could happen? Like, the Batman franchise has been kind of shit for. A long time now with yeah. the Snyder films. It's like, what? What else can they do here? <laughs> what, like, what let's see what. Wrong? Let's see what happens. You know, I, I I went into this film not having uh, very high expectations at all. Okay, uh, like at all. I just kind of was like, what is going to happen here? But I feel like his his strengths come out of his uh, his fish out of water. You know, visual language. The the way that he performs this Bruce Wayne is the first time that we've ever seen him as a recluse. At least in the films, you know, he's always very suave. He's the Playboy billionaire. We've always seen him. Oh, there is no, there is almost like no Bruce Wayne in this. Yes, he, there's five percent Bruce Wayne. There's almost all Batman. All ninety five percent Batman. Yeah. Yeah, even when he's like in in the kitchen and like whatever maid that they had comes up and they were like, mm-hmm. "Mr. Pennysmith, they're here for you." He's just like, "I'm so bad, Mr. Pennysmith." No, he's like, "I'm, I'm fucking <laughs> vengeance here with him. I'm so <laughs> vengeance talking to this guy." He's fucking it's wearing like, some Ray Bans yeah, talking about how yeah. he's vengeance. He dresses yeah. all weird and shit, but it's good. He, he's he's very good at acting without speaking. He's and you need that for a Batman. Yes, his do. eyes look serious. Yeah. His posture is right. The way he moves, there's confidence there. He's really good. Yes. What do you think about the costume? Batman's costume, or just the costumes all Penny, overall. Alfred Pennyworth. Oh, Pennyworth's costume. Best face hair, uh, like you know, the whole film. Really good face hair. Probably the best face hair on any Alfred. He's yeah. the only one with face hair. I think he's the only one with face hair. No, the cartoon Batman has a. a oh, he has Pennyworth. a bit of a has, little stash. He has stash. he has that little pencil mustache, yeah, like yeah, a fucking yeah, yeah. dork. That's yeah. True. This this Alfred is hard too. He looks this Alfred looks like he'd beat your ass. He's grizzled. I like that Alfred. Yeah. But but uh, no, Batman's costume. Um. <laughs> I, I, I'd like to. You took me for a ride there yeah. for a bit. <laughs> We're really getting to Pennyworth's hand. Like, uh, what do you think about his cufflinks? <laughs> no, no um, I thought that the outfit really just works. It's it's functional, which is what we've never really seen in a Batman film. We've always seen it look, you know, spectacular, but it's not a functional. Machine. I'm gonna I'm gonna just like this is the best Batman costume. Yeah, it, I mean, it looks even better than like the gorilla like rubbery bulletproof suit. That mm. that what? was in the Snyder films, like oh, okay. Batflex. Batflex, like yeah. this just looks ill. Like yeah. it looks like it looks like there's a realism to it yes. that just works very well. He's got like a fucking pack on the side of his leg. You right. know what I mean? Like right, right, right. there's this bulky fucking I don't even know like electricity unit on his forearm. He looks good. The the cowl looks good. Yes, the cape is never really like fucking flowing anywhere. Mm. You don't get a much of a sense of it, but it looks kind of leathery and heavy, and it looks legit. He looks fucking dope as Batman. Absolutely, he looks really good as Batman. The Batman suit is super hard. Costume design was very excellent in that regard, yeah. um, and it looks it looks tactical and functional. And that's really what I want to see when it comes to something like this. Yeah. Something that's sort of grounded in realism. You want, you know. Definitely the best, like, contact lenses. Yeah. Like, I've never even seen any contact fucking lens like that. Google ones. Google Glass, get on that. How do they fucking download <laughs> so much data? Like, I don't even know how. Uh, it, it's on there, the cloud. Yeah, it's got to be. <laughs> there, there's a weird thing about this movie that has, like, this heavy dose of realism. It, it'll knock you out of the realism of it very quickly. Your suspension of disbelief can get lost really quickly when yeah, it's something like, so obnoxious. It's like, like the way that they're like bouncing off of walls and fucking explosions are going off in their face. Yeah. When 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 Alfred fucking gets exploded and shit, right? <laughs> like he wakes up in the hospital, he's got like a little cut on his head and shit and he's like all smiling. His hair didn't even get singed. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? It's like, you know, if they're following it logically all the way through, I was like, why don't you take off his cowl? 
You know what I mean? He's like, Batman's knocked out. You guys take him to the police station and shit. It's like, true. why it's aren't true. you just fucking arrest him? Because fucking, you know, Jeffrey Wright's there like, no. He also does a Batman voice in this whole movie, too. He talks really softly. There's a lot like, of oh, whispers like, in this one. In the- it's like, yeah, what do you think drive means? Are you sure? This guy's got a lot of cars. Oh, he punched me in the face. And he's like, yeah, what I need you to do. There's a corner over here. Punch me. Yeah. And it is just like, all right, all right, yeah. But but yeah, there is a lot of like manly whispering though. You yes. know, it's not sensual at all. It's no, just no, no, like no. all like oh, homoeroticism is not here, but No. It, I mean, yeah, it's like not close, there at all. Close, in- the, the most homoerotic thing about it is that Batman doesn't try to like throw dick at Catwoman cuz she really wants it and Batman's just like I'm going to get really close to you. <laughs> But I'm vengeance. So. No, that was the one thing I thought was really unbelievable. <laughs> fucking Robert Pattinson not thinking that Zoe Kravitz is. I mean, he's creepy gorgeous. as fuck. He's like got the binoculars and he's like, oh. I mean, yeah, he's a voyeur. I'll give him that. <laughs> it's fucking weird. Like, I was like, what is the purpose of this scene? Like, what? Like, you could have accomplished this in like thirty seconds. Instead, we get like three minutes of him being like, now she's going to the refrigerator. It's, it's, it's true. But you know, you know that wasn't for that wasn't for him. That was for us. Well, the studio was probably like, we gotta sexy it up somehow. There's no bitches. We where the bitches, Billy? You know, it's like some old Jewish. Yeah, and and it was crazy because like you know, I'm not denying that. That's definitely yeah, probably it, how it went yeah. down in the fucking. They probably were. That's how I feel. The action scenes were tacked on. It was just like, we gotta do something here. There's a lot of talking in here. Where are the explosions? We need. <laughs> Don't forget this is a action movie. Maddie, it's Maddie, a superhero. Maddie. You know, he's got to be fighting the bad guys and yeah. shit's got to blow up. Come on. You saw a, the a last lot of, Marvel movie. A lot of the action does feel very tacked on to me. My favorite sequence is when he's going into he's going into the what is the Iceberg Club? Iceberg Lounge, yeah. The Iceberg Lounge as Batman and uh, as as um not Batman as um Bruce Wayne uh-huh. and then he fucking goes and he changes and the guy comes in and he hits him with a fucking left jab and a right and it it, it might not have been Pattinson because that was like one of the best punches I've ever seen thrown on screen. I was like that fucking looked like it would knock out anybody. But but yeah, I was I was uh, the action was kind of weak to me. Okay. Especially the car chase scene where fucking Batman causes massive casualties in this car case in this car chase yeah massive massive casualties he finally gets the fucking penguin yep. and then the penguin's like you guys don't understand how to speak spanish what is this <laughs> get out of here <laughs> and then they're just like oh fuck we really fucked up again <laughs> <laughs> and they fucking leave him there. Yeah. Not to get arrested. They yeah. just fucking just leave, leave him there. A lot of the realism just goes out of the window with this. But I guess it's a comic book film, so... I mean, there's some things that you kind of have to leave. You, some 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 logic needs to be left at the uh, at the entrance of the theater when you walk in. It just feels a little <laughs> disjointed because they lean into the realism so hard yes, with this do. police procedural aspect yeah, of it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've read a lot of Batman comic books. It was, Batman has always able to have been a super ninja in the detective stories too, so I don't know. I, I kind of felt a way about that, to be honest with you. Wait, wait, we, ha- we, we haven't gone through all the characters yet. We, we haven't gone through to uh, Jeffrey Wright, Paul Dano. Okay. Do, do we want to do that? Should we? Okay. Should I mean, we, like, what do you think about... Uh, uh, yeah, what do you think about the Riddler? I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was actually seems really kind of like off, uh, like Gotham game Riddler to me in a lot of ways. Mm. Um, well, this is not bad. I I, I didn't like uh, I didn't dislike any of the acting from him. Mm. I have issues with the character and kind of the motivations. Not in a sense of how they didn't work in the film, but more or less the the larger themes about what that character represents versus Batman. I see. But I, I like the design. I like how he wrapped old boy's face up in duct tape. That was ill. All it was right. a great way to kill somebody. Congratulations. Yeah. Right, right on. And um <laughs> I, I, I like his Homicide. You know, I like his unmasking. He's weird and goofy and he kinda puts a different play on it. Yeah. He's he's good in it. They they um they shouldn't even said who it was in, in all the uh the lead up to it. Because I, I heard even trying to avoid it, I heard that he was going to be the Riddler. But it would have been a nice surprise to be like, Oh, that goofy fuck. But I mean it was the fact that they never really showed his face in any of the again, you don't watch trailers, so you mm-hmm. didn't know this, but like in the trailers they never show his face. Mm-hmm. He's he's always in, obscured in shadow or he's always been off screen or off in the shot, mm-hmm. you know, somewhere else. So you never really saw him as, you know, like up front. You know, with his glasses on, right. unmasked like that. That was the whole point, I guess, of the whole uh, marketing campaign of unmask the truth. But um, in terms of like a, you know, like a homicidal, psychologically disturbed lunatic, I think Paul Dano pulls that off extraordinarily well. Um, the my, f- I think my favorite scene, which I think a lot of people are polarized on, 
is the interrogation scene between uh, Batman and himself where, you know, he's in Arkham and he's, you know, talking to him about how I'm a big fanboy of you and I've been trying to get a hold of you and I am mm. really appreciate you and I doing this together. And he devolves slowly as he's, you know, unraveling the plan. Mm. And when Batman, you know, derides him and says, no, we're not doing this together. You're a lunatic. And then he just falls apart and screams at him. I'm like, that's, that's solid. That's a solid performance. Yeah. Mm. Um, I don't. I don't dislike that either. I thought. I thought he was just great uh, yeah. throughout the throughout the entire film. Mm. Um, that scene is particularly good. Yeah. Uh, as you said that, I um I, I was reminded of the the Joker scene that was deleted. Did you watch that? Yes, I did. I watched that today. I mean, it was a good cut because Joker basically tells the resolution of the film in that scene, so I can see why it was cut. Yeah. Uh, I was. I I, I kind of thought that the Joker that was in the other room was fucking Joaquin Phoenix. Um, oh. When I watched the movie, okay, um, I thought that was an inter- would have been an interesting take on it, but I I didn't watch the Joker. You didn't watch the Joker. No, movie. I didn't watch the Joker. Why is that? I just didn't feel interested just in it at all. Ran into it. Yeah, I just I didn't want to watch it. I mean, it was like oh, I see what you guys are trying to do here. I yeah, mean, I saw Taxi. I saw the you know so. You saw whatever. the King of comedy. Yeah, you, you, you've you, seen Taxi. So Driver, I just was like, know. nah, and um, I I don't know. I it, I, I I was expecting. The, I was kind of surprised at like the choice that they made with the appearance of the Joker on it, and I think that it's good that they cut it out because it gives them an opportunity to do like recasting or whatever and yeah. kind of that flesh out the character more. But that Joker was really good too. I mean, he figured it all out. He was smart. He wasn't jokery like <laughs> right, a, right, right, a little bit, but in a kind of scary, weird way. It was I, not bad. I think it's just it, it all chalk. Uh, per, per, excuse me, Barry Keoghan, I think is his name. Um, I think he does a very good job, but I also think the Joker uh, doesn't belong in this movie yet. Yeah. Um. So I'm I don't think the Joker belong. But they they go ahead. I'm sorry to cut no, you no, off. no 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 please. Batman, there's there's been this thing that's happened to Batman and since like the late 80s uh-huh. when a batman got you know the dark knight rises right. batman where they've kind of tried to make the joker into this yin and yang with batman and so much of like, oh, i mean you mean the dark knight returns not the dark oh yeah the dark the dark knight returns yeah, yeah. um where where you know the the night the 90s got really edgy and dark and shit right but uh-huh. they've, they've made joker into this like other side of the Batman coin, right? Um, which it, it wasn't like that all the time. Uh, Not in the beginning, I guess right? Again. Yeah, I mean, he was a character. He was a character, um, but they've they've made it so like th- the, essentially what happened is like the the Joker comes and then Batman creates the you know Batman creates the Joker because of he's fucking Batman and they're mm. they're like this cycle of yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah, and and they do that with the Riddler in this one. And I don't think that the Joker is necessarily important to any Batman stories. Like there's so Batman has one of the best rogue galleries in comic books yes. along with like Spider Man and the fucking like Flash, Fantastic Four. Um, you can pick so many other ways to go with it. And we've got all these Joker depictions. I thought it would have been subversive to not have the Joker be a part of this whatsoever. Mm. Subvert expectations i don't need the fucking joker yeah i really don't that was a that was a big argument i think especially online where the joker doesn't necessarily need to be a part of this story and then to be fair like you uh, as you just uh said that you know the riddler's not a really big part of a whole lot of batman stories or not a lot of significant batman stories i disagree i think hush is very much (laughs) an antithetical uh, uh comic book that that debunks that but um in this story, uh, and and all of Batman's rogues gallery, they're all an aspect of Batman's psychosis or a part of his psyche, some sure. aspect of his, you know, uh, his failing of duality. That's that's Two Face, um, the, the 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 Playboy billionaire putting on a persona in order to you know hide his true identity. That's Oswald Cobblepot and the Penguin all together. The 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 the, the order and chaos that goes on within. That's the Joker. Like it makes a whole lot of sense. The Riddler is you know the 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 genius, the mind. Um, that's what he does. They just do things in this story to make. Like the Riddler's, the Riddler is not comic book Riddler. No, the Riddler it is, not, is not very like, much not. Absolutely so, so not. So I, I made a note here. So Riddler is mad because he was an orphan and Bat Dad didn't do anything to save him. Mm-hmm. And he made a, they made a big deal about Bruce, be, Bruce being an orphan too, but it's not the same because he's still rich. Right. And it made him matter because he was living in Wayne Manor, which 
Um, no, it was an orphanage that was owned by the Wayne estate. No, I thought I thought it was actual Wayne Manor was turned into an orphanage. No, no, it was oh, it was ah, you know that's actually that's possible, it, right? Yes. I thought it was an orphan. It was because he doesn't live in Wayne Manor. Wayne Manor no. was turned into an orphanage, right. Which is where he lived in. So it was kind of this meta commentary right, about right, how right, right, class right. resentment. Like philo- uh, phil- uh, uh, philanthropy doesn't work; it just makes things worse. Right. Since they didn't actually turn over or change anything, they just perpetuated the same problems within a system. So he uh, gets like, so later he becomes an accountant, and then right. he finds out like all this nefarious. That's how he discovers shit, the renewal right? fund being a, a cesspool of corruption. Right, 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 right. right, right, and, right. and so it, it's like some Ponzi scheme. Like they're, they're, yeah, it's all corrupted, right? Right. So that's, I mean, that's completely, that's completely different, mm. and that plays into. I, I get. Let's just go off of the rails now and just start talking about things because it's, it's getting long. We have barely shit. Yeah. All right. Sorry. So let's no no. I, I you know we didn't know how we we're gonna do this, but like let's just start talking about the movie and for for the things that it has. Let's right? do it. Let's do so, it. So so for for me it's like it's interesting because there is all of these commentaries about that are kind of changing the way that we we view Batman. Right. Yeah. Over the last few years, especially. Um, billionaires have been seen as like the you know for what they are within capitalism and batman being like this billionaire crime fighter they they have to kind of address that in a way yes and it's interesting you know catwoman checks his white privilege of being gossam like white privilege being one of gotham's like most incurable psychic cancers and then it kind of turning out to be like the bad guys is Edge Lord incel streamer with mm. guns mm-hmm. that that is Gotham's like evil incarnate is kind of funny, but they also kind of like they they kind of chase the idea that this fantasy billionaire vigilante concept is kind of gross and that it's like he would actually just be a terrible person mm. and it does it kind of tries to subvert that it like it leans into that so much during the film yes. but they try to subvert it at the end with this jesus savior symbology uh, symbolism yeah, where yeah. he literally falls and is baptized in fire and then it becomes a literal torchbearer to bring these people out of it wow, but the yeah. movie just doesn't really seem to like batman it's it all of it points to like vigilante heroism is insane and the moral and thematic arc of the movie is that bruce wayne went about this bad and the part of it is that's crazy is like he fails at everything he wants to do in the movie yes he doesn't avenge his parents death he didn't make a meaningful impact on gotham in fact the city becomes a worse place Mm -hmm. batman as a symbol didn't make crime and criminals more afraid of him Mm -hmm. it made it worse the one person that he actually cares about and the shit almost dies and then when he wakes up in the hospital but he's like, you lied to me. Yeah. Like, it's like, what the fuck is that? that and so it seems to me like on paper, the ending of a story like that is for him to realize that he's not making things better as Batman and put the cowl down. I want to know what the fuck, how does he become a better Batman? What does he do? Does he do vigilantism better? Does he not just beat up guys? Like, does he go after their checkbooks? How can he go after their checkbooks when your fortune is built on blood too? So here's where we're going to get into some geeky shit because all of this is talked about in the story called Ego by Darwin Cook. I don't I haven't read that one. Is okay. it new? No, it's not particularly new. I guess maybe 20 I want to say 2012. I want to say Oh yeah, I I yeah. When did when did Flashpoint happen? Like 2012 like uh, like Oh this yeah, that's is, when this you is a new fifty two. This is a new fifty two comic? This is a No, no, this is outside of the new fifty two story structure. This is okay. a self-contained story. Um it deals with the duality of the super ego that is Bruce Wayne, who's well intentioned and noble and more and moral, but also with a chip on his shoulder, considering that he has the wealth of you know the most important uh, being in Gotham City, against his it, which is the vengeful, angry, and destructive Batman. Oh, bro, you're gonna make me get Lacanian about this shit. Oh shit, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, go for it. Yeah. But this is something that does come up: him challenging the the struggle that comes with being this vigilante but also having a moral code he has to confront himself and his psychosis as well as the way that he goes about you know uh you know giving justice to those who need it most but beating up poor bad guys exactly the the fact that his entire um identity at least for bruce wayne is him thinking that he's doing the right thing by knocking around street street criminals for a year is him solving a problem or doing something better without com- completely overlooking the the internal corruption that is the Gotham elite which his father was associated with but chooses not to admit to that's well i mean 
the, one of the things is like in this day and age, and especially the way that they lean into this realism in this world and even go out of their way. I, I'm not the one that brought up the white privilege. You know what I mean? It's no, very explicitly, it's, 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 it's there. very pointed at. Yeah. And also, like I said, there is a very easy Marxist critique about this class resentment that yeah. has turned the Riddler into the person that he is. And it's not necessarily Bruce Wayne, but it is those those structures in society. And Bruce Wayne as a continuingly profitable billionaire, why would you do that to a Batman if you like a Batman? Like, that's such a part of it. I, I don't know what story, how, how the story resolves the issue of the dilemma of him being a billionaire and beating up poor criminals at, at night, but it, this movie doesn't seem to like the idea of the typical representation of Batman that we have, and it doesn't do anything to really resolve those issues. I disagree. I, it does because Batman realizes that he can't just be a beacon of fear in the hearts of street criminals. He has to be he a philanthropist be, as well. He has to be something more with the with the politics. No, it has nothing to do with well, politics. Well, no, either. I mean they they they're essentially in Madison Square Garden. They're trying to kill like AOC or some shit, right? Right. <laughs> in, in the in the fucking movie, right? Uh, I mean, right? She's like she's like. You know, against that and trying, like, you need to do more with your philanthropy. She right, plays that right. very neoliberal, per, social democrat right. bullshit so well. And, and like, at the end, he saves her. Right. Right? Like, he leads her out. And so, to me, thematically, that's kind of the way that he's going. Mm. He's, oh, God, this is fucking, like, as a Marxist, it's like, yuck. Okay. I don't under I just don't understand why you need to lean into that unless you have a different resolution for how Batman's going to be. And and it's like what well, I don't know what he's going to do. Well, one thing he has to understand is that the way that he's been conducting his experiment now is up enough. poor people only is not enough. Okay. It cannot be enough and he has to be something significantly more. Somebody's probably going to say it. so now he has to attack the crime families and not just the street criminals no he needs to be a symbol of hope for the people who still believe in gotham do you think we're going to get a blue and gray batman suit bring it back i don't know yellow emblem I don't batman know. that fucking is happy no He's, we're not gonna get he, that oh my god <laughs> what if, what if he what if he leaves the grunge genre and uh -huh. starts going like new metal or what about like <laughs> rap metal? The next movie, he's dressed like Fred Durst. Oh God! <laughs> Pretty fly for a white guy. That's offspring. That's fuck. Tough. No, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> lean into it. Yo, we might leave. Okay, let's trace it even further. All right, let's keep going. W what does he do in like the 2000s there? Like, but the third movie is he gone like full like full, like punk folk Andrew Jackson Jihad? You know what I mean? <laughs> fucking father john misty like what did he do <laughs> oh my god the possibility i didn't even think about it this could actually be much better we're, we're than gonna look at it in music genres yeah no, but, but really <laughs> look, to, to actually bring it back to to like him being a symbol of hope i would love to see a batman who is not tortured i'm so tired of that depiction of batman i want to see a batman who knows what he's doing is right is trying to do it right and is also a fucking super tech ninja Detective. Well, the reason we've never we've got never, that. It's not that we haven't gotten it; it's that we haven't gotten it in the films. And you know why? It's because we don't have a Robin. We've never had a Robin. Well, a good Robin. A good Robin. Let me let me rephrase that. A good Robin. A, a Robin that is an actual Robin in the cinematic uh, Batman mythos. We've never had one. We've had Chris O'Donnell whining for two movies, and then we had John Blake, who's not Robin. Shut up! It's not Robin. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, we've never had a Robin, which is that. Uh, that opportunity for Batman and Bruce Wayne as a character to grow, to evolve, to become a father, which means more responsibility, but also that means that loner shtick that we've, you know, come so enamored with I throughout the Nolan films, even through the Tim Burton films. That we need to see him grow up and become something more for something, uh, for someone else who's gone through that thing so he doesn't have, so he can genuinely be that beacon of hope so that that child doesn't have to go through the same thing he went through. I don't know how they're going to make a Robin, like a grown man, loner, vigilante, taking in a kid and getting that kid to fight crime. I don't know how they make that work in the They in haven't the tried. Yeah. And I think if they did, there would be... It would have to be... It can't be 
a, a fucking 10 year old it, it can't be a 12 year old it's got to be like Robin, a 17 year old yeah no. it's got to be like a 17 18 year old yes. who has nowhere to go who has autonomy yeah and is not being groomed to be you know vengeance right, right. or whatever he's going to be in the next movie <laughs> you know what I mean? i'm hope See, this is what I, I'm hope. This is why I always thought, and I, and I said it in my review before. I, I thought they were going down the no man's land route, where you know, a, a, well, uh, now it looks like that big time. That's why I thought, yeah. um, like you know, the cataclysm event where the big earthquake happened, and then you know, it's martial law, and Batman has the no U.S. Tr- government's like this place is yeah, yeah, like it's it, it's dead weight. Let's yeah. get rid of it. Yeah, like I thought that's the route that they're gonna go down, and that would be the only opportunity for Batman one to find someone that he you know who knows the city better than him to navigate and solve and solve problems that'd be a perfect opportunity to insert someone who could be a robin it would be good to have robin come in and check his privilege so to speak he said you know i'm glad i had this conversation with you because i knew that a person that saw the movie four times (laughs) definitely had to have like a better like a more positive take on the movie than me and i had these questions i was like how does it get better and it was difficult for me to to kind of like imagine i knew no man's land was a chance but the robin aspect is good i don't think they'll go that way but it would be interesting if they did i mean if he starts rocking a hat backwards and rapping like fred looking like fred durst (laughs) I think that would be potentially the best thing that could happen. Can you imagine just Robert Pattinson just doing like just just rap benefit concerts and that's for the how he nookie, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like that's all he does. Like he does benefit concerts. He's like, yo, we're gonna, yo, raise your hand in the air if you if you wanted. Do you like, believe in Gotham? Say yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like doing like a Kid Rock th- ball with the ball, the bat, the bat, diggy, diggy. <laughs> Yo, I love Batman. It's like that scene in Spider-Man 3 where they're like, they're doing like a Batman, like a Spider-Man, like benefit, like we're giving him the key to the right, city. Right, right, like, right, Yo. Right, right. He's like, oh man, I just got a phone call from Batman. He says he can't make it, but we're still going <laughs> to let him know. Gotham. I would love that. I would, I would, I would appreciate that. And I would feel, I would feel pretty good about that. Feel a little warm on the yeah. inside on that one. Yeah, I just, right. you know, as, as, as a, as a Batman movie, hmm. I like some of the things they did with Batman. I don't think it's a very good movie because of some of the plot features. Okay. Just feel like, I, I, I think that there's this like this thinly drawn line of colorful characters playing out subplots within p- subplots and a uh, detective story that's working over time to be situationally, uh, complicated mm. uh for the sake of not actually working as a very good mystery thriller I see. and like nearly all of the narrative components run functionally in isolation but they're kind of forced together and it lends itself as like a 10 act story or whatever and i yeah. think that's just where it gets complicated as a film a lot of people were saying like oh the eternals was not a good movie it should have been a netflix show there's too many characters i thought it worked it had a, a first second third act and it, i was able to f- i'm able to follow more than fucking 10 characters yeah. you know what i mean yeah. and in this though it's like you get to the end of of um cat woman mm-hmm. doing her little argument with him mm-hmm. uh with the eye thing and it's like okay episode one is done yeah, you okay. know what i mean Okay. It's like I don't even understand. Like, what the fuck else is, like, what is going? On? Like, I was like, oh my god, oh they got him. It's like, oh he blew up. Oh, oh shit, they got Alfred. It's it's done now. It's right. like something's gonna happen now. Right. And it's like, oh it's not done. And it's like, oh my god, <laughs> we didn't understand Spanish. <laughs> fuck. That is a major. Like they follow that thread for like a good thirty minutes. It sure. leads to the fucking car chase that happens. Yeah. A, a lot of it feels like maybe, and I don't know, maybe the studio got their hands on this one a little bit too much. You think in the editing room they had a bit more control? Could be. Do you think that there's like a, a Blade Runner cut with the voice narration over the whole thing? That's the one thing that I really wish they had. I really wanted them bat to go narration? all the way with the bat narration. They started I, and ended with it. Why not go all the way with it? It was not good, though. I don't think it was bad. I well, think they set it up. They made see, it uh, like rational. He I, was I, writing in a journal. Yeah, but I just like, it's so edgy. One of the lines he says, and, and I wrote this shit down. Go for he it. He said, um, I'm like a nocturnal animal. And then and then it shows the notebook and you can see it like, yeah, like all caps yeah. <laughs> underlined, <laughs> like underlined like a bunch of times like I'm a nocturnal animal. I gotta push myself. And it was just like word. You're the one who's talking about <laughs> him leading hard into the whole Kurt Cobain thing. Why yeah, would that not I be never the way he writes? Kurt Cobain say he was a nocturnal animal. <laughs> 
He probably wrote it on the yeah. wall somewhere and it didn't get to his song. You uh, don't know that. You yeah. don't know. Kurt was an edgy guy. Uh, what do you think that Fred Durst would write in there? Yeah. He's like, he's like <laughs> I need some nookie. <laughs> for the fucking nookie. So well, you, I don't actually know any Limp Biscuit songs to make better jokes about that, but yeah. What was uh, all I all I know is like the album titles like a hot dog starfish and the what is it I, I chocolate know. starfish and the hot dog flavored water I hated water. that music so much I was already an <laughs> underground weird hip hop kid at that time <laughs> like really uh, Fred Durst I don't know how he got popular I really don't I really don't get it we're not gonna talk about Fred Durst in this right <laughs> I, don't talk I about mean Fred Durst. <laughs> hopefully we get Durst Batman Durst Batman. Yeah. Wait, they're I mean, gonna recast be... Robert Pattinson and get someone else who's like super into rep, like hardcore, like oh, new metal man. rap or shit. Yo, logic, <laughs> logic is Batman. We got a black Batman. What are you talking about? This is phenomenal. Like this is great. Black Lives Matter. Rejoice. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, that would probably follow the uh, the thorough line of the themes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This movie. This movie really. It's not kind subtle. of leaned into a lot of the social political issues of our time yeah in a, in a like you, you almost feel like if it would have been come out like a year later we would have also had like kgb in it as well somehow like because of russia you know what right, i mean right, right. it's like yeah like the like one of the guys is ukrainian oh my that, god can you imagine the, in the in the second movie kgb just makes like a a brief appearance yeah he's like from mother russia he's like no trust me i'm on your side now i cannot believe what putin did to the ukraine <laughs> They are my brothers. Flamethrower. <laughs> they call me KG BFF. Oh. Best bad friend forever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bad friend forever. Bad friend forever. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know, man. I uh, th- The movie, good, good, bad, or ugly? Good. I'm going to give it an ugly. Really? I, okay. I, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's a great movie. I, I don't think it's bad. And I think that Batman fans should be happy to have it. Yes. But... Of all the things to do with Batman, I just personally am wanting something else. Okay. Yeah. That's that's it. I, I don't think it's bad. I just think it's not it's 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 not ugly in the sense that it looks ugly, but man, yeah, I, I just can't uh, uh, the the plot structure of it is just like so long and convoluted yeah. and, and a little bit weird. They could have cut some, left some on the cutting room floor to make this movie a little bit better for me, but at that point you sacrifice a car chase. Yeah. You sacrifice uh, performance by the Penguin. Right. You sacrifice a few things yeah. if you do that. So, difficult movie to make. Um, phenomenal effort. Uh, I I am not a hater, but you know, <laughs> make sure that you write that out. Well, like you know, <laughs> my uh, I am not a hater. Yeah. Well, you, you see, like a lot of my critique is also um, things that I don't think other people care about. You know what I mean? That's not necessarily true. I think I mean the think. kind of Marxist class resentment thing and the follow through of the vigilantism and the like a billionaire is not going to be a good guy. They should have just fucking leaned into it. It's like kill Batman or l- make him lose everything. Right. You know what I mean? And now you have a Batman who has to figure out how to be a better Batman without anything. You don't think that the the, the final act did that in any I think the final way. act was a bit heavy handed where he's like He's holding on to the thing for like 10 minutes. It was so funny when she's like kissing him and then she gets kicked in the fucking head. <laughs> I, <was> like, <laughs> I really thought she was going to lean into him. There were so many times where I thought like we got quiet and people looked at each other. I thought they were going to be like, I am vengeance. Aww. But when she's about to kiss him and then the guy fucking boots her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I thought I was like, oh, man, I, I was laughing at the wrong parts of this movie. <laughs> and tonally, I should not have been. But they did it to me. They, I, I, they, 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 they set it they, up that way. They forced my hand. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What about the score? Did you like the score? Um, the Nirvana song was kind of like, I hate when they use pop culture songs and make them like slower or something mm. these days. And I think a lot of movies fucking rely so much on songs to spark nostalgia to make things seem a little bit more dense. Like it's, it's been that way since like Reservoir Dogs. Mm. But... You know, um, I was blame Tarantino then. Yeah, I, I, well, I, I, I do blame him a little bit, but mostly <laughs> it's like fucking um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay, they're uh, big fucking right. yeah, yeah. They, they, they uh, are villains in this story. Mm. But no, I thought, I thought the score was good. I thought uh, every the, like, there's nothing about this that is like bad. Mm. Even the even the the, the long fifteen act thing is not bad because we're so used to binge watching tv in this manner that storytelling Mm. has evolved apparently a little bit but for me it's like as a movie going experience it was like rough for me to watch it's it's a bit of a slog um three hours the guy watching it four times though 
I, I paced myself. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, I would have definitely gone with you for a second time. Yeah, man. I, I, mean, I would I would like to see it again on the big screen or, uh, you know, high def. The first time that you watch it, I strongly recommend that you watch it in a theater, a credible theater that you can rely on, yeah. that has a really nice screen and a good sound system. This we, is the best. We were going to IMAX it, but we didn't IMAX it. Didn't IMAX it. No, okay. We just regular. But we went to the to the big joint in Mizuno Kuchi, so it was like a... It wasn't one of these like little small screens. It was mm. a big, Epic, you know, yeah. yeah, it was a big screen. If you've done it that way, then you've done it the right way, at least once. Word. All right. Oh, any last thoughts? Do we have any last thoughts on this? Um, I'm. I'm looking at my my little notes here. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna check mine as well, actually. <laughs> I'm vengeance. <vengeance. laughs> Motorcycle porn. There's a lot of motorcycle porn in this movie. Oh, yeah, they do have that. There's a ton of motorcycle porn in this. And if you like motorcycles, you'll probably just get off on the motorcycles. There's like a yeah. lot of motorcycles. Yeah, the end scene where they're like racing, he goes forward and she goes forward and then he goes forward. They're like, literally on a top oh. of a building with the motorcycles on the... How did they get there? Mm. <laughs> I don't yeah. get how they got there. They do. It's cool, though. It's fucking cool. It looks cool. It does look cool, yeah. but it's still motorcycle porn. If you're into motorcycles, all... More, more. If more you power if you it. cut out like you 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 drop like seventeen minutes if you cut out some of the motorcycle riding. I think you can at, at least a good a good fifteen. Not even not that. even not even joking. At least like seven minutes of motorcycle riding. Yes, yeah. at least. There's there's a ton of um, point to point uh, transitions where it's just them riding a bike to the next place, like in the same scene. <laughs> you could just cut that out. <laughs> we Word. know where they're going. But no, motorcycles. Yeah. You motorcycle porn. Yeah, I mean, okay. Like, yeah, Shit. Um, the Batman. Uh, we're here for it. Do you, what, what do you think we're going to get back in here and do this again? Do you think we should... You, you're not into the Marvel films, huh? I, I mean, the Marvel the Marvel movies or the... Uh, do you, what, what We should do... Uh, what is the one with uh, Michelle Yeoh yeah. coming out? Um, Michelle Yeoh coming out. Um, the uh, Everything, Everything... What is that called? I have no idea, actually. Oh, no. It's fucking great. <laughs> Um, hold on, hold on. Much like you, I'm very much into Spider Man, so I, I have like watched all of the Spider Man movies and okay. Venom movies. Everything everywhere all at once. Have you seen that? I have not. I have heard of that. It's coming it out. Good. Like um but yeah, maybe we could do that one. I'm down to do Moon Knight. Um I might watch I I, I, I like you know, mo most recently I read like the uh the Warren Ellis uh okay. run of Moon Knight, which is really good. I like Moon Knight as a character. The Doctor Strange shit is coming out, but you say you don't really want to watch that. I huh? might skip it. It depends. It depends. Okay. Um if I, if it if it piques my interest down the line, I might go pop in and take a look. Okay. If well, we do, if that happens, I'll I'll bring you up and we can talk yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah, I'm down I'm down to to do that. I'd like to kind of do something that is not music on side of the thing, maybe books, probably not books cuz so it, it has everything to do with propaganda. your audience. If if your audience yeah. can't stand the side of me, then probably you get somebody else to do it. We'll we'll <laughs> see, man. Hopefully we get some uh some people to watch it. All you right. Know, I'll I'll put a pretty good description for it. But yeah, um Odd Cipher Divine Conversations Katomi Mega and the music cut off right then. We're done. Cheers.